So let's look at some subnet masks and see how they affect our IP addresses and what network our computers are on. We have two subnet masks here. This group of computers are using this subnet mask and this is a class A, B, C subnet mask. And then we have a group of computers with the same exact IP addresses as up here using a class A, B subnet mask. So basically, if you eyeball it, you can see where the 255 stop and the zero starts, that's where you draw the line between the network portion and the host portion. Same thing down here, 255, 255, 0, 0.0. Well, in this case down here, we use the first two octets as our network portion. Okay, so this is where it gets a little interesting. While all these IP addresses up here are on different networks, 192.168.1, 192.168.2, 192.168.0, by virtue of this subnet mask, look what happens. Now all of a sudden, they're all on the 192.168 network, and they can all communicate without the use of a specially configured switch or router. Okay, subnetting is a very deep and complex subject. We're just scratching the surface here. This can get really strange really fast. Luckily, that sort of complexity is not needed on a home network. All I want you to take from this is what a subnet mask is and what it does and just add it to the things that you can check when you're trying to figure out a connectivity problem.